good afternoon everybody at the outset uh, i'm extremely grateful to uh, kanal gautam and uh, idsa uh, audience also for giving me this opportunity um, philosophy uh, and especially indian philosophy uh, doesn't have uh, that much respect in the even in the academic circles so uh, forget about uh, indian philosophy uh, uh, treated with respect uh, in uh, in defense so uh, uh, when uh, radha krishna pillai was uh, first uh, invited uh, by defense you know uh, we were uh, uh, we were so happy and uh, we thought that uh, well at least uh, someone is taking indian philosophy seriously and that someone is uh, uh, a decision maker institution which is a decision maker institution which is taking indian philosophy seriously uh, this i am uh, saying uh, not to uh, put forth my sorrow as my subject is not recognized but uh, just to um, uh, tell you that uh, how pathetic the situation is uh, in our uh, own uh, universities to uh, look at our own uh, uh, philosophy our own tradition uh, so uh, we just uh, without uh, wasting much time uh, i would uh, start with i will be dealing only with uh, the topic vidya samuddesha because i am an academician i don't know any abc of military and defense and uh, war uh, we are looking at arthashastra as a text uh, which is uh, uh, which is a text of good governance and which is also uh, uh, can be interpreted uh, for leadership so we are looking at as a leadership model and uh, also good governance uh, the need was because when uh, we teach social political philosophy to our uh, philosophy students uh, whenever we talk about uh, social political uh, institutions theories etc etc the entire paper is again loaded with the western thoughts and that compelled uh, some of uh, not me some of our <coughs> colleagues uh, to have a look at uh, whether there can be uh, uh, some social political thought in the indian scenario uh we could not include that in the syllabus because that was a very tedious process to work out uh, in a very academic manner but in the meanwhile we thought that why not take a research project for 5 years on leadership and good governance where we can find out the workability of this model and if it really works out then uh, we can uh, really include it in the syllabus in the coursework uh, and we can say with the confidence that yes this can be done so uh vidya samuddesha my uh, presentation is divided into four parts vidya samuddesha uh it includes anvikshiki uh, radha krishnan has already uh, said something about anvikshiki the ways and means of critical thinking anu iksha that is to examine now there are two words in the indian tradition which are used for philosophy one very popular word which is used is darshan and another word which is a, rather a technical word which is used for philosophy is anviksha and uh, in anviksha what uh, what is important is uh, uh, thinking reasoning methodology and uh, uh, reasoning can be of uh, many types and uh, uh, the word anviksha is also parikshamana that is to examine you know buddha also is uh, telling his uh, followers that uh, please examine my uh, sayings and uh, then accept so examination was a very essential part of this and uh, this Uh, radha krishnan also has mentioned it that how many uh, 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 texts refer to anviksha nyaya sutra refers to anviksha and uh, kautilya artha shastra refers to anviksha in a very predominant way uh, then vidya samuddesha says that uh, this is uh, chanakya trai that is three vedas then it is also varta which includes agriculture trade commerce and cattle breeding uh technology was not known during that period but varta is all that activity which adds to the material well being which adds to the wealth and therefore if technology would have been there uh, probably that also might have been included in uh, the topic uh, varta and then comes danda niti now danda niti i am not referring only to danda you know when one uh, uh, one may say danda as military uh, one is free to interpret that way but danda niti is the word which kautilya is using 
and uh, ni nayati is that is to take somewhere you know it it is uh, uh, like a leading path and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, i am translating it as a science of governance but it's rule of law that is dandaniti and that is how uh, kangle himself has made a distinction between uh, dharma and uh, danda uh, he says uh, dharma is uh, morality or moral rule uh, duty centricity but duty centricity which is not enforced by law it is the duty centricity which is enforced by moral rule and uh, danda it is uh, uh, the law of the state uh, so that is how uh, we are looking looking at it anvikshiki is again further elaborated in the vidya samudesha prakarana in three ways uh, three types of anvikshiki sankhya yoga and lokayata surprisingly there is no mention of vedanta which clearly indicates that this is uh, the treatise written when there the distinction between vedanta and sankhya was non existent you know as in bhagavad gita except 15th chapter we come across everywhere reference of sankhya and uh, that is considered as the uh, legacy of vedas and upanishads carried forward in the same way the commentary uh, when it includes sankhya uh, it says that uh, this is the oldest one uh, sankhya is a, a way of life or darshana or anviksha and uh, uh, in sarvadarshan sangraha uh, where uh, sarvadarshan sangraha treatises which is commented upon by kashinath shastri abhyankar uh, uh, professor shrinivasan may be knowing kashinath shastri abhyankar one of the great uh, sanskritists maharashtra has produced who has written a commentary who who writes that uh, the types of anvikshiki you know there where inference is given importance and therefore reasoning is given importance and conclusion is drawn on the basis of reasoning it may be a syllogistic inference or it may be a type of immediate inference but what is important is uh, use of reasoning to arrive at the conclusion and uh, these are two sankhya and yoga they are mentioned together actually they are samana tantra in the tradition it's always that they go together uh, it's like a um uh, it, it's like um, a, a couple going together sankhya is a rational uh, method uh, where uh, anumana is accepted as the supreme pramana and yoga is the uh, spiritual or the intuitive method and um, uh, also it's a theory praxis combined you know sankhya is the con- uh, entire theoretical framework whereas yoga is the praxis and praxis means that it is that which really brings a positive transformation so we put it into practice and then we uh, we get a positive transformation another uh, uh, possible interpretation of intuitive method also can be uh, excellence because uh, it is like uh, reaching that stage of pragna there are different stages like uh, dhi and buddhi and uh, uh medha and uh, you know categories of intelligence are given and this is something like reaching the highest point of genius and that is pragna uh, excellence par we may say uh, which opens up uh, creativity and uh, vision and uh, all this uh, so th- uh, there is a rational method uh, because sa- sa- sankhya etymologically is uh, Uh, discussed but to that i'll come in the next slide and lokayata that is the empirical method so sankhya uh, in amar kosha the term sankhya is uh, explained as charcha discussion evaluation uh, debate argumentation it's also vicharana consultation it is also discriminative knowledge discriminate between what discriminate between right and wrong Dis- discriminate between to use the sanskrit words yukta and ayukta dharma and adharma or uh, true and false or consciousness and matter so it's a discriminative knowledge and uh, sankhya and yoga together actually are uh, knowledge wisdom combined and i'm reminded of this uh, knowledge wisdom combined uh, knowledge wisdom combined uh, which is given importance by china you know from 2008 onwards not only 2008 from 2006 onwards in beijing university 
uh, there is a, a series of, of seminars between India and China and I, I participated in at least three or four of them uh, and the theme of the seminar is uh, knowledge, wisdom and beyond or knowledge, wisdom, spirituality. And uh, they are trying to examine this uh, knowledge, wisdom uh, model uh, and they are trying to develop the Asian model vis-a-vis -vis the Western model. And that is how they are emphasizing this. Uh, 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 they are emphasizing this knowledge, wisdom, spirituality, and even beyond uh, spirituality, whether uh, the, the, uh, one can uh, really transcend. My point here is that uh, knowledge, wisdom apart, but Sankhya as a theory and Sankhya as a Anviksha, why is it important for a leader? Not only a, uh, not only a king, but any leader. Because in Sankhya, there is the inbuilt position that Purusha, that is Purusha, it means Purusha in the empirical sense, the embodied human person. I am not saying Purusha in the, uh, in the transcendental sense. The embodied Purusha who uh, reasons, who takes decisions and who discriminates, who decides, he has no, he or she has no option whether to take decision or not to take decision. In a particular situation, decision has to be taken this way or that way. And after taking the decision, uh, the further action also is to be done. And uh, there is no again uh, way out uh, whether I do the duty or whether I do not do the duty. Uh, the philosophical framework says that you are not free to choose between these two, whether to do or not to do. You are only free to choose between whether to do the right duty or whether to do the wrong duty. But you have to do, you have to act. Now, Sankhya model says that, well, you have to act, but act in a very dissociated manner because you are only knower, you are not the doer. In other words, knowingly you take the decision and then face the consequences, whatever are. And then say, then accept that, well, uh, in the best possible situation, you had taken the decision and then the consequences, what may come, uh, I, have, uh, I have to face the consequences. So, what is important? Now, in this framework of mind, what is important is not really, uh, not really the consequences, but uh, the intention with which the decision is taken. And to take a decision regarding the intention, uh, this Vidya Samudesha or the special training uh, for the leader is really necessary and philosophy is that uh, which really helps and therefore Kautilya probably starts with Anvikshiki. Uh, the problem is why is it that Kautilya starts with Anvikshiki and we have to think about it. You know, um, Yoga Sutras for example, uh, Atha Yoga Anushasana immediately after that and Yoga Chitra Bhutti Nurodha and then Patanjali starts with, uh, uh, Patanjali starts with uh, yamas and niyamas. He does not start with asana or pranayama or samadhi or, uh, because there is an order, how one should go about. So, a leader also, how a leader should be trained by a teacher that he should be first given training in his thought power. You know, he should be trained to be a thinker and therefore, sankhya charcha, vicharana, uh, consultation, right, wrong, knowledge, etc. And this, uh, this is to be seen against uh, the duty centricity uh, which has been quoted again and again that ours is a duty centric model. We are born in this universe with, which is orderly and we have a responsibility to maintain that order. Every human person has the responsibility to maintain that order. And uh, a leader uh, has a more responsibility, not only to maintain that order, but to see to it that every human person has been given the conducive atmosphere to uh, do the duty. So, uh, Sankhya put into practice is yoga. It is uh, theory practice combined. And then it is, uh, as I have already said, reaching excellence. And this actually comes close to the concept of Raja Rishi. You know, is a wise thinker is not only a knowledgeable person, is a wise thinker, but not even wise thinker, who is deeply rooted in the yogic practices of controlling his senses. You know, Arishadvargaha, Indriya Jayaha or uh, whatever the next sutras follow in Kautilya's Arthashastra, they are logically re related with one another. 
Kaudilya is developing the treatise in a very logical manner because immediately after this comes uh, Vridha Sanyoga and then Arishad Varga. And uh, uh, what yoga is talking about is training the um, training the mind first and then training the body. And then beyond body mind there is something that may be called intellect, that may be called wisdom, that may be called spirituality, that may be called the excellent aspect of human personality, whatever it is. Now how that Rajarshi would be? You know, one of the Shanti Mantras of Upanishad where King Janaka describes his kingdom, I will uh, mention only two lines. The first line says, Namaste no Janapadehe Nahita Agni Na Vidwan. You know, in my kingdom, there is no thief. In my kingdom, there is no one who is not worshipping the fire. Now, worshipping fire is just the symbol of uh, wisdom or sacrifice, you may say. One may actually need not worship fire, that, but symbolically it can be taken. Na avidvan. You know, in my kingdom, there is no one who is not cultured. It's not just literacy, but no one who is not cultured. And very beautifully, the fourth line ends, he says, Nasvairaha. In my kingdom, there is no human person, man. Svairaha in masculine, uh, licentious, uh, who is not following the moral rule. Svairini kutaha. You know, the question of being a woman, uh, immoral, simply does not arise. Such is my kingdom. Uh, that is uh, that is the model which is uh, provided in the Upanishads and uh, uh, probably uh, Kautilya is looking at it. The beauty of Kautilya's uh, Vidya Samudesha and An Anvikshiki is that it is not one-sided. He does not stop at rationality, he does not overemphasize the wisdom model, uh, he takes a very holistic view and uh, he is well aware that for a king, uh, empirical approach is very, very important. Verification is very, very important because operation of Dandaniti will be based on evidences, will be based on verification, will be based on actually what is perceived or verified and therefore he includes Lokayata. In no other matha, because uh, in Kautilya's Arthashastra commentary gives uh, all other opinions also, Lokayata is not very specifically and categorically mentioned. But Draupadi mentions in Mahabharata that she has learnt Lokayata from a scholar who was appointed in the court of Drupada. So, it means that in the royal court there was, there, there may be, there, there may be a tradition of uh, Lokayata and uh, historian Devi Prasad Chattopadhyay has given a long uh, uh, evidences about uh, how Lokayata was uh, there and respected and all that. But the point is that this is the empirical method, Pratyakshameva Pramanaha, that is perception and perception alone and they go by verification, they go by verification so much so that ultimately they end with skepticism, but that apart. They are pro-science and they are accepting everything for Abhyudaya because they say Artha Kamohi Purushartho. Now, uh, this is very important for a leader because the operation of the rule of law, whether it is a small institution, whether it is a big institution, whether somebody has violated the rule is to be perceived only on verification and is, that person must be punished. You know, somebody is coming late to the office. No, one cannot say that, uh, it is a simple thing, that uh, somebody is not signing the muster on time, very trivial issue, but it is a disciplinary issue. Now, one has to f find a verification measure. Now, uh, the problem is that for maintaining peace, order, punishing criminals, encouraging trade, commerce, and also maintaining peace and order during warfare, what is very important is the Lokayata model. So, what, uh, what is Chanakya trying to suggest is that he is putting all the three models of Anvikshiki to a leader and he says, now the choice is yours. You look at the situation and in a context you will have to decide whether you will go by reason, whether you will just go by experience and verification and proof or you are able to read between the lines even with the verificational data. All that is, so one thing is very significant is that the holistic philosophical training for a leader is given in this model, Anvikshiki. 
it's a uh, it's uh, it is a model which doesn't uh, exclude anything and therefore uh, uh, kautilya himself uh, uh, is uh, singing the glory of anvikshiki and he says that why is it that anvikshiki should be started he says that it is like uh, uh, like a lamp you know it is the illuminator of knowledge of all knowledge pradipas sarva vidyanam then it is means of all actions upaya sarva karmanam then it is the perennial source and strength of all duties ashraya sarva dharmanam dharma can be uh, interpreted dharma stands not only for virtues not only for values but it also basically stands for the duties the duty centricity the duty centric approach and uh, kautilya says that anvikshiki is ashraya sarva dharmanam it is useful to the wo- uh, to the world it is lokasya upakar you know for uh, for abhyudaya uh, for abhyudaya uh, this is this is important lokayata and uh, pradipas sarva vidyanam wisdom is very important so sankhya yoga is important balance one's intelligence in calamity vesana and during the prosperity that is abhyudaya vesane abhyudaya cha buddhim avasthapayati and the end is really wonderful he says pradnya vakya kriya vaisharadyam cha karoti you know the word vaisharadya which is used it means that it brings absolute clarity you know with thousand wattage light thrown on and it's that, that is the power in the word vaisharadya it brings clarity to intellect words and actions so a leader when actually is uh, uh, is uh, following the thought process then that thought getting converted into maybe speech act and that speech act again converting into the actual kinetic action so all the locutionary perlocutionary and uh, you know all th- there is there is a synergy uh, and uh, uh, that is the better understanding of the situation now this is all up to anvikshiki now after anvikshiki uh for a good leader they, it's the total well being and therefore just uh, wisdom spirituality knowledge etc is not enough and therefore he says uh, uh, trai vartha danda niti the next sutra which uh, talks about trai uh, and uh, uh, the commentary says that this is for discriminating between dharma and adharma so discriminative knowledge uh, has to be used uh, trai uh, basically trai is the uh, mindset creating duty centric mindset creating and try always as emphasize that we are born in this world we means we human persons we human persons are born in this world not for the sake of enjoyment because we are already in debt and what is that debt that we are born with this order uh, there is a nature bountiful and then we have been given uh, uh, all the pancha bahabhutas because of which our living is possible and all that only human intellect can destroy this order uh, this uh, capacity this power is not there with any other species and therefore the responsibility is given to human persons in the vedic tradition and that is dharma that we have to pay the debts with which we are born and repaying these debts actually take care of building the institutions the social institutions like marriage like family like education and also the state so uh, this is uh, uh, why is it that trai is included uh, in this uh, it, it's not ritual trai is to understand because the idea of rita that is the natural order the cosmic order is there in the trai and it is the duty centricity which is emphasized in trai and therefore dharma and adharma uh, that is and the concept of swadharma the commentary uh, talks about swadharma one's own duty and swadharma how swadharma is uh, to be decided there are certain criteria and what we find is that almost up till 19th century this duty centric approach continues in our uh, uh, in our legacy and specially in maharashtra we find in the 12th century dhaneshwar writing on bhagavad gita elaborating this concept of swadharma emphatically emphatically and he equates everything else with swadharma and he says that just follow duty centric approach and do your duties without any expectation don't think that you are the doer take the decision do the actions and then uh, 
do it with best possible intention we do it with the intention of the well being of everything and leave the consequences of course all these are ideal situations but a king is told about the ideal situations it doesn't mean that all kings were uh, very ideal and it doesn't mean that uh, there were uh, no declines and uh, but you know when the course curriculum is designed the course curriculum is designed to produce a best possible product and therefore here a course curriculum where uh, uh, he is uh, talking about this and then vartha uh, which is agriculture trade commerce cattle breeding now lokayata uh, is very well known for this lokayata says that uh, we are not accepting uh, dharma dharma but uh, we only accept krishi uh, goraksha vanijya these are the sadopaya uh, so to add to the uh, kosha and then danda niti that is the rules of uh, good governance it is appropriate selection uh, and the just or the appropriate uh, ness is very important and the word which is used in our tradition is uh, sama samma or sama for appropriate you know bhagavad gita is uh, using the word esha uh, samisthiti partha or buddha is using the word uh, samma and uh, here uh, when uh, nayapanaya uh, kautilya makes a distinction actually he is saying that uh, leader has to use in an appropriate way between the just and the unjust situation and all this is useful these are the sources for loka yatra that is the peaceful journey of the people and uh, it is for the orderly maintenance of the worldly life then uh, uh, you know artha shastra i omit this because uh, how these are uh, uh, used with uh, saptangas the power of knowledge wisdom you know swami requires all this and then amatya janapada durga kosha uh, what i want to say is vartha is important for both infrastructure as well as tre treasury danda for uh, an appropriate use of danda is very very essential for maintaining peace law and order so uh, army is required is one thing but again apart from army you know there may be danda which may include uh, legislative uh, um, procedure it may also include the judiciary so these social institutions are also part of danda niti that is maintaining uh, uh, law order peace uh, in the normal circumstances and then uh, mitra now um, they uh, in a very humble way i have tried to make a case study uh, i will just narrate it in a very brief way 1991 uh, department of philosophy hod uh, was the one person 52 students and by 2013 there are uh, more than 1000 students more than 14 faculty members there are four course coordinators and uh, there are other non teaching staff and Uh, there are uh, uh, two batches of ma and there are mphil courses there are 40 researchers working in the department for mphil there are more than 60 researchers working for phd in philosophy department and we have philosophy department has ties and mous with the foreign universities uh, we also collaborate in various academic programs with the foreign universities all this is possible now when i uh, when the analysis was done you know uh, uh, it came to us that uh, well uh, knowingly unknowingly this is the application of uh, swami amatya uh, that particular model of saptanga that uh, um, vridha sanyoga for example the when hod was uh, just a single person uh, running the courses uh, for the single person uh, was very difficult and then uh, um, uh, fortunately uh, the seniors the scholars the elders were available in mumbai and were approachable and helpful and therefore uh, uh, the department uh, could give uh, many options to the students and many disciplines and could make a case that uh, well so many options are provided and so many students are studying so all that was possible with uh, uh, not only uh, vridha sanyoga but also mitra the uh, visiting faculty and so on and so forth and so, some other institutions collaborating and 
all that is there in your paper i just don't want to take uh, uh, much of the time and further plans for arthashastra education uh, what we are doing is we are uh, trying to concentrate on the study of the concepts uh, we are trying to reconstruct it in the postmodern way um, one way of doing it is as uh, Aditya Kiran said, hermeneutical exercise. I was very happy. Uh, somebody outside the philosophy circle is using the word hermeneutics. <laughs> and that hermeneutical exercise is taken very seriously in Europe. They are going back to their legacy, uh, their Greek legacy. They are interpreting Plato. They are, and they, they don't say that they are reviving. They say we are reconstructing. They are not hesitant going back to their, and they are not bothered about whether it is the written tradition or unwritten tradition. They say that it is the culture which we are inaugurating. It is the tradition which we are inaugurating. Now, postmodern thinkers are doing it and they are saying it. They say that if philosophy confined itself only to analysis as the second order activity, philosophy reduced itself to, you know, it, once upon a time it was the queen and it reduced itself to the janitor of the palace of knowledge. And it is just brooming the floor of science. And then not only that, but said that we neglected, we neglected the value based. We neglected the treasure of philosophy as the central question which Greek philosophers asked, what is the meaning of life? And we confined ourselves only to analysis and analysis model. And Criticizing this model, the postmodern thinkers said that with all the vengeance, the question came back that what is the meaning of life in the midst of, in the midst of the economic affluence, in the midst of uh, the total material well-being. And the boredom which was felt in the midst of this material well-being is to be understood. And therefore, again going back to what the tradition says. So, we are reconstructing, reinterpreting in the light of co contemporary situations because we want good leaders. You know, right from grassroots level, we want good human persons. We don't only want uh, people who are knowledgeable, those who, uh, those who get 60 percent marks in the examination because my professor always used to say, you should be aware that you are ignorant of 40 percent when you get 60 percent. <laughs> you know, uh, Nowadays, who bothers about the 40 percent? <laughs> they, they even. Decimals only now. <laughs> so, uh, my point is that when we have undertaken this project, all that we want is that uh, creating good leadership, and therefore uh, we do it uh, for uh, we do workshops and we do it all for non-professional professional courses small scale industries, big corporate professionals. Now, our contact with the corporate house uh, has become so fruitful that uh, we were really lacking space. You know, uh, 1987, it was the uh, sixth plan UGC, which just, uh, uh, you know, uh, superimposed this department of philosophy on Bombay University, saying that it is a shame that uh, university which is 150 years old does not have a department of philosophy. And people were extremely reluctant to accept this depart this proposal because they wanted reinforcement for the existing departments. And the fund was taken and you know three positions were given, only one position was filled in and then uh, uh, we, uh, five rooms were given. So naturally the restraint was on Durga, you know territory, infrastructure. Uh, no typewriter, uh, no clerk, no peon, no chairs, no benches. So, uh, what the HOD has to do? Maybe uh, probably uh, under the tree, take a class. Uh, well, uh, the days have gone. Uh, the point is that uh, uh, with the corporate connection, we got uh, 4 crores for a building. And the building will be uh, state of art building and that is the assurance given by that industry person. My point is that uh, we tried to reach out to people with uh, so many other courses also. We are running 10 such courses, diploma and certificate level in different uh, areas of Indian philosophy and philosophy in general. And we try to reach out to no, uh, you know, uh, non-traditional learners. 
So the age of our le learners is uh, something like 20 to May 75. And uh, these learners, once they come to us, uh, they are with us, uh, say, for te 10 years, 12 years, uh, 14 years, and uh, they enjoy uh, doing this. So uh, doing all these activities, uh, what we have done is we are trying to incorporate not only Kautilya Arthashastra, but we are trying to bring in the duty-centric and the virtue-centric or value-centric model in the leadership program. In the research, which we have undertaken for the period of five years, uh, we uh, have taken uh, research trainees and uh, three such batches of research trainees have completed and they have gone to society. We haven't taken any single paisa from them, but we have uh, put a condition that they have to go in the society and they have to work at the grassroots level at least for the period of five years and they have to come back to us every year, not every year, actually every month, they should keep on reporting us whether this model is proving uh, beneficial, uh, whether there are lacuna, uh, whether they are facing difficulties, whether this needs some improvisation, uh, whether this needs to be thrown in the dustbin. Whatever it is, uh, we are trying to uh, collect the data and uh, this is how we are doing it in our tradition. My point is that philosophy is very, very important uh, for a leader because everything is here. You know, uh, later on it comes on the map, it comes in the action, but actually the chip is here and the training of the chip is very, very important which Kautilya has realized and a very holistic way which otherwise I have not seen in any philosophical tradition I see in Kautilya. Even the predecessors of Kautilya have not taken this holistic view. Thank you very much.